Welcome to Getting Biblical, the show where I drink too much and talk about my favorite Bible stories. I am Matt Smith, your host, and thank you for joining us today. So here we are back on the grind, continuing the origin story of the Israelites, you know, going through the Old Testament book by book or chapter by chapter. We're actually still in Genesis. We're, we're coming near the end. We're uh, doing Genesis 37 through kind of 40 or so, those chapters. Anyway, we've done the story of Abraham and then Isaac and then Jacob, and then we introduced his 12 sons, right, which will become the, the 12 tribes of Israel. We've done all that. Uh, we're going to today focus on his favorite son, Jacob's favorite son, Joseph, and the issues that come when you have 12 sons and choose one of them to really obviously be your favorite uh, and, and some of the jealousy and, and, and uh, inner fighting that happens from that. So a lot of fun stuff, a lot of neat things to go over, and I can't wait to get into it. But first, as always, uh, let's talk about what I'm drinking. So when it comes to drinking for this show, I, I try very hard. In my heart, I want to uh, tie in what I'm drinking to the like the plot or to the story elements that are that are going on in today's ep- in, in each episode. And I, I want to do that very very much. So I, you know, either whether whether it's a pun or a play on words or something to that effect, that's that's what I want to happen. So I spend time at my local liquor store or Total Wine or whatever, and I'm walking through, perusing the aisles, looking for something that will spark some creativity or something. Even if it's not for this current episode, you know, like I, I, I'm always thinking about like the next like 10 episodes or so and like, oh, that'll be a great bottle for eight episodes from now or, you know, for this story and try and map things out to some extent. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times the bottles that I think will be a perfect pairing for the, for an episode ends up being like a $90 bottle of scotch or something. And that's a, that's a hard uh, trigger to pull <laughs> to, to buy a $90 bottle just to overindulge and try and, and get a little sloshed and, and, and do a show. So uh, often I don't get to buy the bottle that I really want to buy because it's over budget. But uh, that's always kind of the idea. So, unfortunately, <laughs> all that to say that for today's episode, uh, there is zero. There is zero tie-ins to the story. There is absolutely nothing that, that has anything to do with what we're, what we're talking about today. Uh, in fact, today's episode was a bit of a, a, a budget purchase. But that wasn't the intention. So, I was, I was in Total Wine, walking around, doing my normal thing. And I was down the beer aisle. Uh, which is a an amazing aisle to go on. Uh, the craft beer industry has just exploded. Everybody knows that uh, in this country, and uh, it's just it's so fun to just look around and see the do you know uh, companies I've never heard of releasing products, or companies that I have heard of releasing limited edition or, or seasonal or whatever type things. It just you know like the the marketing and the packaging and the artwork and everything. I just I love all of those aspects of beer. You know, I just I can spend hours just looking at all that, and not even drinking it. It's just just looking at the labels and things and and everything. I I love that aspect of it. So I was doing that, trying to look for something that might would tie in to this episode, as I was saying, and I turned a corner, and there was like a pallet uh, on the floor of a of a beer that I've had before. I'm familiar with the beer, but it was I guess it was like overstocked or whatever, and they were trying to unload it. And that's nothing against the beer, or the company, or anything like that. It's not. It's not a diss of any sort. But they were. They were trying to unload it. So they were having them uh, a six pack for two dollars and ninety nine cents. So three dollars for a six pack uh, comes out to fifty cents a beer. Pretty great deal. Pretty hard to pass up, uh, especially what, since it was something that I've had before and I like and I know what it is. And so I ended up buying uh, like. I think five different six packs of it. I bought a whole case of it, case of, of four six packs, and then another one on top. I felt like a baller walking out with the whole case. It's slightly also like I have an issue, but uh, whatever. <laughs> so, for, but for less than twenty bucks for a, a case of it, was, it felt neat, felt good. So anyway, uh, so the beer in question, <laughs> after all that, is um, this is the first time I've ever said it out loud. I think it's a it's a German. They. It, uh, they immigrated from Germany uh, in the 1840s, and then here, of course, here in the states, they settled in uh, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. In the 1860s, they opened their brewery here in the states, 
think that makes them the seventh, I think I read that, the seventh oldest brewery uh, in the United States. Uh, Yingling, I think, is the holds the claim as the oldest one. They, I think they opened in like the 20s or something like that, the 1820s. So they opened in the 1860s. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so long standing in our country, they, in the 1980s, they got bought by Miller, the Miller Coors Company. Uh, part of InBev and everything that helped their distribution. So they're available in all 50 states, uh, pretty widespread, but not one that I've heard a lot of people talk about. No one really, like, you know, when people list out their favorite beers, it's not one that's usually, like, rolls off the tongue, uh, partly because the name is hard to say, or at least it looks like it should be. And here I go for the first time ever saying it out loud. Uh, it is none other than uh, Leinenkugel. Lean, lean and Kugel? No, Line and Kugel. L E I N E N K U G E L. Line and Kugel. Anyway, uh, it's pretty cool actually. So obviously like a, like a German name or whatever, right? Uh, Line and Kugel. But because they they set up shop in Chippewa Falls, their their logo also has like an American Indian on it. So you got this mix of this German name and then American Indian uh, on like part of the logo and everything pretty cool pretty awesome i i'm down with it uh you know just representing where they where they come from here in the states so that's pretty neat anyway blah 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 <laughs> so they they do a lot of different stuff and but one of the more famous from what i've seen uh one of the ones that i that i'm particularly fond of is their summer shandies and now if you don't know about shandies as far as the beer world goes shandies are so you've got like you know you've got pilsners and stouts of course porters and whatever uh, hefeweizens and whatever all you know all, all these different types of beer out there and the the shandy though is like a is the Arnold Palmer of beers right so an Arnold Palmer made famous by the the golfer of the same name who liked to do iced tea with his lemonade and kind of made it a thing for that drink right and not to be confused with black and tans, which are which is a, like a light beer and a darker beer poured together in the same pint glass. That's just two different beers put together, right? But a shandy is a like a base beer mixed with a non-alcoholic other product, usually a lemonade or something like that. So, uh, like a, a lighter, fruity, whatever, and it ends up making uh, an, an easy to drink. Low alcohol percentage. Uh, this one's like four percent. The one I'm having today, in that in that range, right? It goes a little bit watered down, but easy to drink. Great for summer. Great for picnics, outdoors, whatever. Often fruity, right? Refreshing, everything. So this one in particular, the one that was on sale that they had overstocked, I guess, was the is the berry shandy. So I don't know what exactly they're mixing together but it, you know so rather than lemonade though it's it's more like berry flavors and and i like i like berries so i'm into it uh it's nice it's nice it's again low percentage so it, it's taking me a few i feel a little bloated right now if i'm being perfectly honest like it's taking, it's taking me a couple to get where i need to be at only four percent but it's fine at three dollars for a six pack i'm in so but and again, that price has no reflection on the company or the product. If you think it's something you would be interested in, I highly recommend it. But they do a lot of stuff, a lot of a lot of a lot of different lines, a lot of different. You know, the shandies are kind of like, I feel like kind of what they, their their niche they really clung on to. But they do a lot of stuff. They, they've done. Uh, they have a uh, like a vanilla porter out there that's pretty great. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of other stuff. They're they're I don't know. It's a good company, great company. I've never seen them on tap actually. Now that I think about it, but always in the grocery stores locally and anyway whatever so <laughs> a lot of talking about all that kind of stuff that's what i'm drinking today and it doesn't tie into the episode at all but it's fine uh it was cheap and we're we're about it so anyway so that's what i'm drinking today and that's the story behind it and yeah here we go <laughs> so back to the bible stuff okay so remember the the 12 the 12 sons of jacob right we've got uh, there were and, there, and the different mothers that were that were part of it, right? We had Leah and we had Rachel. Rachel was the one that Jacob loved the most, and they had their two other girls, uh, Bilhah and and uh, Zilpah. And between them, they had the twelve sons: Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, 
Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph and Benjamin were the ones by Rachel, and those were those were the favorites. Uh, Benjamin, I think, was still just a baby at this time. Uh, Joseph was 17 at this time, just to give you kind of a frame of reference. Uh, Reuben being the oldest, and then and then Joseph being 17 right now. So, okay, that set the that sets the stage. So one day. Uh, at 17 years old or so, Joseph is out with uh, his brothers from his. What do you call? Wait, what do you call? When your dad has multiple like wives, what do you call the mom that's not? What What do they? What do the Mormons do? Is that like their aunt or? It's not like stepmom, but I don't know. I, I <laughs> my brain just crashed i literally just like it just i stopped me right in my track i was like i was trying to gear up and like let's let's do this let's talk about this show and everything in my brain just deadline just like i just or just <laughs> just full stop like wait a minute what do i even what do i even call her what what would joseph call zilpa his mother's yeah his mother's sister's concubine whatever slave girl that she gave to his dad to have children what would you even call that person uh maybe just by name just hey zopa like you just you just address her by her first name i don't know anyway <laughs> so so he's out there with his brothers from zilpa uh, i don't i don't think he even says which ones but uh, he's out there with those but so it's not like the full blood brothers it's like those the half the half blood princes the half-blood brothers and they do something bad it doesn't even say what it is they just like he, they do something bad and 17 year old joseph squeals on the brothers to the dad like he goes and he tattles on them and at 17 like come on man like that's you're old enough not to be a twat about stuff like this right not like come on like what are you doing like what did, he should know that snitches get stitches right that's like you're old enough to know this i mean 17 Back in Bible times, I mean, you you were old enough. I, come on, especially on your brothers, man. Don't tattle on your brothers. That's that's, that's your family. Anyway, so that kind of that kind of like pissed me off, and so it did the brothers also. They didn't like it either. Um, and I don't even think it was anything bad. It doesn't like like the Bible is really clear about mentioning when people do really horrible things, and this doesn't even mention what they did. So they were probably just like. Like they weren't like like if they were banging sheep or something like okay I think the Bible would have mentioned it like like oh like Joseph was out with his brothers and they were molesting sheep for no reason and he went and told his dad okay that's the thing you could talk about that would be that would be relevant at this point uh, but no it doesn't say anything about it so they probably were just like supposed to be watching the sheep and they were on their phones playing Candy Crush or something and he went and squealed to his dad or I don't like this something probably you know minor but he's like dad like. They keep playing on their phone and not watching the sheep or what it like like I don't know probably something stupid but it didn't win him any points he didn't get he didn't get win any favor with his brothers and, and of course you know word gets around to all of his other brothers are like ah oh, like what like this tool man like what is he why, why is he talent on us so not off to a good start our boy Joseph the Bible makes no qualms about the fact that Joseph was absolutely his father's favorite. And like every parent has a favorite, all that we all know that, right? Um, they're not supposed to say it, but they do. But Jacob doesn't even pretend. Like in like uh, in fact, like Joseph is such his favorite that that Jacob makes him a like a custom made, multicolored, like fabulous like and, and colors were expensive back then, uh, you know, to do in clothes and stuff. So that that tells you like what level of of expense it was. You know, the fact that it was multicolored. But multicolored, a fabulous uh, robe to wear, right? So if you can imagine, just this, this gorgeous, luxurious, expensive, uh, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, whatever, like custom-made robe, and all his other brothers are still wearing like potato sacks or something, like like just like clear, like a head and shoulders above everybody else. Like Jacob is like, nope, he's my favorite by the one wife that I wanted to begin with. <laughs> Like he, he's, this is this is my favorite one. Anyway, all the other brothers are walking around with like goodwill stuff, and the the brothers are not in like they like they, they doesn't it doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. No one wants that. So they start to hate him for it, and the tattling just goes on top of it, right? So they already kind of like didn't like him for the one part, and then like oh like he's clearly the favorite. It just like starts to like like build up over time, and like I get it, like you know that sucks, and and also. So <laughs> So when you, I don't know if you're like, everyone's like this. 
when when you don't like someone, that person can do nothing right, right? Like I like I I'm, I try very hard to give people the benefit of the doubt or try and be objective and try and and take emotion out of stuff when I when I dislike people but it, it gets the best of me man like there'll be people that like you just like you hate them like you just don't like them and you could have you could have two people one person that you like and one person that you don't like and they could say the exact same like sentence or joke or whatever type of thing the same exact thing and if it comes from the person that you don't like you're gonna be like Oh, uh, like what? That person's an idiot. They're so stupid. Like, why would they say that? Like, whatever. The same sentence could come from someone else that you do like, and you could be like, "Oh, that was hilarious. Like, you're so funny. Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that and put it on Twitter. Like, like you've all done that, right? Like, that's like it's just like everything that that person does just gets poisoned in your brain. Um, <laughs> I, I know. I, I, I have to. I try to. I try to catch myself when I do this with people because I'm like, no, Matt. Like. Like was what did what did what they say was that actually funny like you know give them like you know think about it objectively I try to be really good about that but it's it's an instinct thing it's it happens so that's kind of what was happening with the brothers they were just like at this point they're like he's got the he's got the the Gucci Louis Vuitton coat he thinks he's better than us he tattletailed us when we were playing Candy Crush on our phones like like we hate our brother like he's a twat like we don't like him so that just started kind of like spiral and. They did not like him. And Joseph, I don't know if he was oblivious or like he was a favorite, so he didn't care or whatever, but he's oblivious to the fact that I don't know. Like, and one night he's, uh, he has a dream and he comes up the next day. He's hanging out with his brother. He's like, hey, hey guys, I had the wildest dream last night. You'll never believe it. So in my dream, you know, they're all like, like one eyebrow kind of raised, like, okay, what do you want about now? Like, what, what is, what's this new bullshit? And he's like, so last night in my dream, we were all out in the field and we were cutting up uh, wheat and we were bundling up the wheat and everything and, and doing the harvest. And out of nowhere, my bundle of wheat just just stood up straight, just stood up tall. And all of your bundles of wheat bowed down and like worshipped my bundle of wheat. Like, isn't that crazy, guys? Isn't that amazing? Like, what, what a weird dream. And his brothers are like, brothers are like you little piece of shit. <laughs> it's like that, huh? That's how it be. Like you think you're better than us? You think that we all should bow down towards you? Like you, like you, you just because your dad's favorite or whatever. Like, uh, like they were not about it. They were not having it. Uh, and he's like, "What do you mean? Like I was just, it was just a stupid dream. Like don't, don't get bent out of shape or whatever." And they're like, "Nope, nope. This is clearly you, dreams are like things that that." Is, or how you feel, right? It's your brain processing stuff. You clearly think that you're better than us. So that didn't help anything anymore for Joseph's case. And then sometime later, uh, it kind of happens again. And at this point, I don't know. Maybe Joseph was just arrogant. I don't know. But he <laughs> he just didn't. I don't know. He didn't. I don't know. I don't know. Um, a little bit later, he has another dream. And the next day, he's like, he's like, guys, I, I had another wild dream last night. And they're like, oh, boy, he's on his shit again. Like, what is what? It's, this fucking guy. Here we go. <laughs> He's like, what? What's the dream this time, Joseph? And he goes, in this dream, I, I was just chilling. I was outside, and I was looking up at the sky, at the night sky, and there's there's the sun and the moon and the stars and everything. And out of nowhere, the sun. I don't know what scene you're looking at. Like, I guess it was a dream, so I'm, I shouldn't be nitpicking. But to see both the sun and the moon at the same time. But whatever. He sees the sun, the moon, and stars. And out of nowhere, the sun and the moon and 11, specifically 11 different stars, all bowed down before Joseph. And he's like, isn't that crazy? Isn't that cra That's so crazy, guys. Crazy dream that I had. And, the, of course, the brothers, like, rolled their eyes hard at him and hated them even more. And then, he, and then Joseph goes and tells his dad about it. He's like, Dad, I had this crazy dream. And his dad, like... The interpretation, apparently, of the dream was that obvious. I don't know if you guys have caught on already, but uh, supposedly the sun is supposed to be his dad, Jacob, and the moon is supposed to be his mother, uh, Rachel, and then the 11 stars are, of course, his brothers. So that's what it's supposed to represent, you know, and all all those things, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars all bowed down to Joseph in his dream. And at this point, even his own dad, who got him the, the Gucci, Louis Vuitton, whatever, like, fabulous coat... Uh, his his clear favorite of the sons was all like, 
<laughs> you little shit, who do you think you are? Like, you think I and your mother and your brothers are going to bow down to you? Like, like <laughs> you need to you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, like <laughs> go to bed. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what, what you do at that point, but like, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Not having it. So not only did he piss off his brothers, but it, he kind of pissed off his dad a little bit there. But uh, it, it also says that his dad like took mental note of it. He's like, huh? Like he, he kind of put him in his place, but he's like, that's that's interesting. I wonder if that's prophetic. I wonder what's going on. So he's like thinking about it. His his brothers are not on that level. His brothers are just like 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 oh uh, man, I, I, our brother Joseph is a piece of shit. Like we he is we hate him. They were not they were not thinking about it in any kind of positive way. But anyway. So some more time passes, life goes on, I guess, and at some point, Joseph's brothers are a few towns over or whatever, and they're taking care of the big flock of sheep, but Joseph isn't with him at that time, and so his dad tells Joseph, hey, uh, go check on your brothers, make sure they're okay, make sure everything's fine with them, and it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, I don't know why, I just think of it like, like when you were little and like, your mom would like tell you to go like to the other side of the house and check on your little brother or sister or something. I don't know. I don't know if that ever happened in your family, but you know, like, like, Oh, go, go see if your sister's okay. Like now that I'm older, I realize that like maybe partly it was to see if my younger sibling was okay. I actually think that it was probably just because I was annoying my mom and she just like, go, go check on your sibling and leave me alone, hoping that I would get distracted and, and stop bothering her. It's probably what happened. But anyway, Maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe maybe his dad was tired of hearing about his stupid dreams or whatever. He's like, hey, go check on your brothers. Go 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 over there and check on the flocks. And it's a few days' journey at this time, so whatever. So Joseph leaves. And and this is real quick. This is weird. Uh, I think it's an unnecessary part. So there's this whole like several sentences, several uh, verses, like passage here. It seems so unnecessary. But so Jacob. Uh, he he gives instructions to Joseph to go check on his brothers in a town called Shechem, and uh, to check to check on him. And then so Joseph goes to Shechem and he doesn't see him. They're they're nowhere to be found. And so he's just looking around, kind of like what's that uh, meme from last year that was going around a lot with the uh, uh, John Travolta from Pulp Fiction. It's the John Travolta from from Pulp Fiction meme where he's just like looking around, like like wandering aimlessly. That's what I imagine. Like Joseph's just like like looking around, like his coats in his hands or something. He's just like, oh what? Just like aimlessly walking through Shechem, looking for his brothers and the flocks, and can't find them anywhere here. And it says uh, some guy is is there. He says, hey, like can I can I help you? You look lost. And Joseph's like, oh, I'm looking for my brothers and their sheep. And the dude is like, nah, man, like they went all over to Dothan. You gotta go find him in Dothan, and Joseph's like, "Cool, thanks for the info." And he runs off to Dothan, and I, like, was that? I don't know. Like, why was that even necessary in the in the passage? Like, I don't. I'm very curious what the point of it was. I'm trying to think of a good example, but like sometimes the Bible just skips over things that seem super important, and it just lightly like blurbs like half of a sentence about it like oh what's a good example uh i hate i hate when i like i start down a road on a bit and i just i can't back it up like let's just drop some nonchalant knowledge about oh oh, oh like so like in genesis right it's just like oh and like god created this and that whatever and all the animals and all the stuff and everything and it's like and the sons of god roamed the earth and whatever and like whoa 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 excuse me real quick like who who are these sons of god and like like what 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 <laughs> like, what are you talking about they're just roaming around. It's not, it's not talking about Adam and Eve, like these other mysterious sons of gods that just roamed around the earth. That's, that's all you get. That's that's the whole like quote unquote. And sons of God roam the earth. Next passage. Let's keep going. Like, can you can you elaborate on that a little bit more, please? And we don't get anything. It's just like, nope, we're dropping it. We're done. But then here we get five verses about Joseph just aimlessly walking around, and some guys like, hey, you should go over to Dothan and find your brothers. Anyway. Um, that's not important to the story. <laughs> Let's keep on going. Okay, so Joseph Joseph makes it to Dothan, and he's coming up on his brothers, and he's got his you know rainbow bright like Gucci Louis Vuitton whatever coat, and he can be seen from a mile away, and his brothers see him, and they're like, oh, don't look now, but old Dreamer Boy found us. <sighs> Man, he's annoying, right? The whole the whole thing like they start kind of making fun of him and get riled up, like just just the pure the sight of him just starts to just to get him going 
and I'm sure, there was, I'm sure they were like trash talking, all this kind of stuff and whatever. Like, he looks so stupid wearing that outfit. Like it doesn't even match his belt or whatever. I'm sure like whatever they're talking about. Like, you know, like, like he's wearing that coat with those shoes, something. I don't know. And <laughs> they were all you know, like, oh, I'm look at me. I'm Joseph. I have a pretty mom and I'm the favorite. Like whatever, whatever. I don't know. Whatever kind of like things they were saying. And long story short, they get themselves all riled up, and things escalate very quickly. And they all agree and decide to when he gets when he reaches them when he gets there to just uh, kill him, <laughs> to just just be done with it. Like they're like they just nonchalantly agreed they would kill him and drop his body off somewhere and just say a wild animal killed him and let it let it like just be done with the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, they did some more dress talk. I'm like they, I'm, they probably came up with like cool like catchphrases or something. Like like as they were killing them, like like where are your dreams now? Like or like bet you didn't bet you didn't see this coming in your dreams or I don't know. Maybe they had better one liners than that. But anyway, uh, so they were planning on killing him. But the oldest brother, Reuben, he heard about it and he didn't really want to kill his little brother. Right? He he kind of like he didn't let himself get all riled up. But he also didn't want to straight up disagree with his brothers. That you know, there's so there's a there's ten of them right there, all deciding, making a pact to kill their brother. And you're outnumbered if you try to go, go against them hardcore. So he tries to like play into it. He has this, he has a, a scheme where he's like, no, nah, no, nah, let's not kill him. Let's not kill him straight up. We don't want his blood on our hands. That'll stay with us forever. Let's skip the killing part, and let's throw him into this well over here, and we'll just leave him there, and then he'll starve to death or whatever on his own, but it won't technically be our fault, right? We, we won't be the ones that actually murdered him, like, right? It's like, it's a, you know, it's, he was a pussy for, for starving to death, or I don't know, like, <laughs> whatever. And, but... That was what Reuben told them, but his actual plan was just to wait until the brothers had cooled off a little bit and come back to their senses, and then he was going to help rescue Joseph out of the well and save his life and all that kind of stuff. So it sounded like kind of like a dick thing to do, but it was actually a, a part of a bigger, more noble plan. So, so they and the brothers agreed. The brothers were like, "Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's good. We don't want, yeah, we don't want that on our conscience. We don't want to actually murder him. We'll just leave him for dead." Joseph comes rolling up, and before he can even say hello or do anything or whatever, they all they grab him, they scoop him up, they take off his Gucci coat, and they throw him into this empty watering well that's nearby. All right, just toss him in. You can't climb out. There's no ladder or whatever. So he's just at the bottom, the bottom of the of the well. And so Reuben feels good. He, you know, like okay, the brother is safe. Joseph is safe. They didn't murder him. He's sitting. He's chilling in the well. And he's like, let me go let them chill off. And so Reuben disappears. He he dips out. He just he goes to the movies or something. I don't know. Fiddler on the roof or something. I don't know, whatever was playing that day. And so he goes off. But then the rest of the brothers are they're sitting around. They're eating or whatever. And they're kind of like you know glad that you know their brother's in a well and they're gonna get to go home and not worry about him anymore. And and they look up in the distance and they see a caravan of Ishmaelites. And then Judah, the one brother, gets an idea. He's like, hey, hey, guys, I just had an idea. <laughs> if we just let our brother starve in the well, then his death will still kind of be our fault, right? But what if we sold him to those guys over there as a slave? Then we wouldn't have to worry about feeling guilty of letting him die, right? Because he's not dead. He's, I mean, he's a slave, whatever, but he's not dead. Plus, also, we could make some beer money uh, from the profit. And, uh, you know, like, what do you think? And all the brothers, they think it's a fantastic idea. They're all about it. So they, they sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites, and they get 20 pieces of silver, which... So <laughs> who, who all wants to have a fun conversation about biblical currency, is that, is that what you wanted to learn about today? Did you wake up this morning like, man, I really wonder how currency worked in the Bible. Well, I'm not going to do a big study, but I was curious why why the 20 pieces of silver? Like, Because it's very specific, right? 20 pieces of silver. What does that mean? How much is 20 pieces of silver today? What is that in uh, Big Mac scales or whatever? Like, what, how, like how much is that? So uh, I'll be brief, but I think it's an interesting perspective. Point one to consider in in – Torah law uh, it, in Exodus, it states that if you have a bull and the bull kills someone else's slave, 
which would be property or whatever. But if you have a bull that kills someone else's manservant, you have to pay the owner of the slave 30 pieces of silver. And then you have to kill the bull also. You have to kill the ox or whatever uh, because it murdered someone. But but you have to pay 30 pieces of silver t- as as compensation for the death of the slave. Okay? So that's like the baseline. That's how much a slave is, I guess, worth or whatever. It's the going rate for, for, the, for slaves in ancient Israel, ancient whatever, Bible times. So do we know that. That's one thing. Also, in the New Testament, uh, which is a little ways away, and I don't know about inflation and all that, but when Judas backstabbed Jesus and double crossed him he also got paid 30 pieces of silver to do that which is pretty interesting uh, so the going rate is clearly like a man's life is equal to 30 30 pieces of silver 30 shekels or whatever um, that's the going rate and also there's a couple other in like I, 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 I find this fascinating there's a couple other spots where they like you can do some kind of interesting conversions a plot of land in a couple of different verses uh, in a, is generally speaking ends up being about 400 shekels. So 400 pieces of silver. So think about like the land value around like where you live for you know wherever you're at. And so for me, uh, I looked it up actually on, on Zillow. <laughs> There's a plot of land available not too far from me, you know, enough to build a house on or whatever. And that's about $30,000. It's about thirty thousand dollars to buy an empty lot of land and build a house on it. Of course, building the house is more expensive, but the land itself about thirty grand. So, if that that plot of land was worth four hundred shekels uh, as the going rate, that would be about seventy five bucks of our dollars per shekel. So, right, doing the conversion of thirty thousand dollars, four hundred shekels. So, selling their brother for twenty would have meant you know 20 times 75 so about 1500 bucks is what they got for selling their brother into slavery uh to the ishmaelites and divided by 11 brothers each each brother made like 130 dollars uh, like so each each brother for selling <laughs> each of the 10 brothers oh i guess if it was 10 the math's off i was thinking i did it by 11 uh, so if they made fifteen hundred bucks divided by ten, then because the ten of them were the ones that split it up, so yeah, each one gets one hundred and fifty bucks. So it's it's like a new pair of Jordans, like or whatever, like a like a new nice pair of Jordans. Like you didn't they didn't even get to buy like a new iPhone or anything at like for once they divvied up the money. Like that's not even what their brother was worth. Like they got I mean a new a new nice pair of shoes, maybe some nice sunglasses, you know, like you know some Oakleys or whatever that type of thing. Uh, that that was, that was what their brother was worth. Also, just a fun a fun thing, uh, you know, back to if a, the going rate for a person was 30 shekels and they did it for 20 like they sold their brother at a discount right he their brother was the 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 hey there we go that's, is that italian um the 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 Leiden kugel overstock at total wine like the clearance aisle that's what they sold their brother for <laughs> you know they give him a uh was that a 30 percent discount on the going rate for a human being back in those days Anyway, also fun little thing. Uh, if you just want to talk about, I don't know. I like currency. I have, I'm a finance major uh, back in college that I never did anything with, but this stuff interests me. <laughs> Remember when Abraham lied to the king uh, Abimelech about his hot wife being his sister, and then the the king like thought she was a sister and so he, like he took her and married her and then things went bad and he's like you guys need to leave once he found out that they were actually married and not brother and sister blah 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 all that stuff and then he gave abraham a bunch of money to leave well uh, if you go back and look it was actually about a thousand pieces of silver for that whole debacle that whole thing so that's a lot of money uh yeah like that that's part of why like abraham got so rich i mean that was like that's uh, you know we're talking 400 shekels for a plot of land, a thousand straight. So he could have bought like two and a half whole plots of land for this whole interaction with Abimelech and everything. Okay, anyway, enough about currency stuff. Thank you for indulging me. Anyways, so they sell their brother for, for 20 shekels. And like the, the traders are like, yeah, like, yeah, so I'm sure like, I'm sure it went down like this. They like, they sell the caravan and they're like, like, hey, dudes, like, uh, you guys want to buy a slave? <laughs> they're like, uh, how much? And the brothers are like, how much are you going to give us? And like, oh, like, mm, uh, like the going rate's 30, so uh, how about 20? We'll give you 20, 20 shekels for the guy. And they're like, sold, done, take him, like whatever. That's a, that's a deal. And the Ishmaelite, the, the caravan guys, 
they know they can flip it. You know, just I mean, they they can they can put some new clothes on them or whatever. They can, they can flip that sale and make a quick ten shekels easy easy money. Uh, so you know, it's it was a very quick transaction. Like not much haggling going on at all. The brothers didn't give a fuck. They're like like twenty shekels done sold. Anyway, like how like how rude. I would be so mad. Like I know like Joseph was kind of like with the dreams and everything, kind of like a little bit of a dick. Uh, you know, I get like the brothers didn't like him sometimes, but like like I would be mad if my brothers sold me into slavery. Like come on, like like I'm worth more than that. I think like I, like don't discount me. Like like get full price. I think I don't know. I I think I'd be personally like like if you're gonna sell somebody, you need to like price is right it up right like you gotta like be bob barker up in this place like know what things cost man like like don't undersell like that's a human being for god's sake like anyway <laughs> whatever okay so they sell their brother like a 70 percent discount they get rid of him blah 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 then reuben gets back from the movies or whatever and he sees his brothers all like wearing their new air force ones or whatever that wearing the new oakley's uh whatever you know they they spent the money they had got from him like what what did y'all do <laughs> and he looks into the well and sees joseph is gone joseph is not there and reuben starts crying and he's he's distraught and he's like what did y'all do that was our brother what is wrong with you all that stuff and their brothers are like what? come on man chill it was it's a, it was a better plan they don't think that they knew I can't remember if he told him or not. If they was like, if he was like, I know I was gonna save him, or if they were like, whatever, it's a better plan this way. Uh, he doesn't die by our hands anyway. But they're like, they take they take the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci Gucci uh, coat or whatever, and they ripped it up a bit, and then they killed a goat, <laughs> and they they took the goat's blood. I laugh every time it, we talk about killing a goat because I just, if you remember back for the Samson story, just like you know, he, he killed the lion as if it were a young goat. So. Unfortunately, any time a goat dies in these stories, I just I laugh a little bit because of that. Anyway, very very rude to goats everywhere. But they they kill a goat and they they took the goat's blood and they put it all over the coat, just smeared the the Gucci coat with the goat's blood just everywhere, ripped it up a little bit, all this stuff. And they get back home and they go to their dad and they're like like Hey, so totally random. <laughs> Uh, but we found this uh, this coat out in the wilderness with all this blood on it. Uh, do you recognize it? And of course, their dad recognized it. It was it was the one and only, the custom made, you know, Gucci, you know, Louis Vuitton, whatever, like type, you know, this this coat that he made for his favorite son. Of course, he recognized it, and he and he he loses it. He's like, surely an evil animal has come and he's eaten my favorite son and torn him to shreds. And he's just like, like he's just buying it, hook, line, and sinker. And Jacob cries and he he mourns and he rips his own clothes and he's just a wreck he is just sad for days and days and all of his kids are there and they start to try and like comfort him but he isn't having it he is just like sad sad face and and he he proclaims like he says i will stay sad until the day i die uh, just full on depression and scene fade out <laughs> and i think that's where we're going to end it actually um uh spoiler alert joseph is fine <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the caravan takes joseph down to egypt and they sell him to a guy named potiphar 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 uh potiphar who is an officer for pharaoh himself and that's where we're gonna pick up next time so yeah i thought about leaving it in suspense like like and in scene like there we go but i didn't want to leave it on like the dad crying and ripping his clothes and like full under pressure but that, that's a that's a very negative sad thing to end on so so we're gonna pause it there but joseph's fine he 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 survived the well he survived the brothers wanting to kill him he's in the hands of potiphar we'll see if if that's a good thing or not but uh we'll talk about that next time and we'll end it there so also oh also real quick so right here here's where, here's where the bible goes so the bible like they're like <laughs> The, the brothers sell him to the caravan. They go down to Egypt and they sell him. And that's like the end of, I think, chapter 37. And like Jeff, Genesis chapter 38 is like kind of like, like, meanwhile, like, like they totally abandoned Joseph for like a whole chapter. And this is where the story of Tamar happens. It's like the, the fourth episode that I did. Uh, Tamar gets her groove back or whatever. And that's the story of Judah and where he like had some kids and, and he got that 
uh, one of his one of his sons uh, Tamar as a wife and all that kind of stuff and and if you haven't heard the story you can go back and listen to that but that's Judah which if you think about it if you remember that story so Judah has a, had his kids and they were kind of dickheads and they were and that's where the problems came when when the one of them married Tamar and I don't want to spoil any of that stuff but his kids were dickheads and I th- I wonder if it if it ties in because judah was also the one that was like hey let's sell our brother as a slave like that's kind of like a i don't know like maybe that's part of why why they were a little bit of of dickheads and uh, in that story with tamar so if you haven't listened to that episode you could throw that in right now you can go back in the archives and, and <laughs> listen to that episode and have a little filler before next week but but that's where we're going to end it again thank you guys for listening uh, at the time that this is coming out, I'm, I'm recording it in advance, so this should be coming out. I am currently in real life, actually, in as as when this gets released, I am in Scotland right now uh, on a little vacation. So if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram and all that stuff, and uh, you can see some maybe some cool pictures of me drinking scotch on a different part of the world, in a different part of the world, and all that fun stuff. So. Um, as always, thank you guys for listening. Hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.